So I was doing some research lately, and I always like to see what the scientific community has to say about dating, attraction, flirting, mating, all that good stuff. And I found a really interesting, uh, not article, an actual study that was done. And it's funny because I feel like I've seen them all, but this one was new to me. I think it's been around for a few years now. And I'll even link in the show notes a link so you can check it out if you want to read it. I know sometimes these studies can be a little dry, a little boring to go through. But this one is from March 2015, and it's titled The Verbal and Nonverbal Correlates of the Five Flirting Styles. So what I want to do on today's episode is I want to go over some of those flirting styles because I think that there's something for us to learn from directly from you know what the actual study is saying, but also some indirect stuff, stuff that I just want to be able to discuss with you. So I'm going to read some parts of this study, go over these five flirting styles, and then, like I said, try to give you some tips on how you can implement them and so you can understand better how flirting works and also why it's so powerful. Real quick, if you have not rated the podcast, it would be great to hear from you. There is a rating system on Apple Podcasts. There's also one on Spotify. So wherever you're listening to this episode, we'll definitely like a rating because it's good to bump up those numbers. Yeah, that's right. We bump up those numbers. We spread the podcast far and wide and more great guys like you can hear the podcast and learn about it. So would love a review. I read every single one of them that comes through, the bad ones, the good ones, and everything in between. So hit me up on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave a review. Thanks so much. And I ask because sometimes people forget and they some people don't even know that it's possible. And it is. So check it out. Also, sometimes it's nice to see an example of what flirting looks like. Well, I have a course called Infield Breakdown, which I believe I talked about on one of the recent podcasts, and I've also talked about it on previous ones as well. Infield Breakdown is an amazing course because it actually shows you infield footage of me flirting with women and going out into the field. So you will see it real hand. What does flirting look like? How do you pass her tests? How do you be more polarizing? How do you get her attention? How do you get her number? What are you supposed to text her afterwards? You see it all clearly and broken down into multiple videos. I'm going to put a link for you in the show notes. You should check it out. Honestly, I think I'm, I won't say most proud, but I'm pretty damn proud of this course. One of the more uh, most proud I am of, of my courses only because, man, it was hard to film. Let me just tell you, it's one thing going out there and talking to women and getting numbers. That's a whole skill set on its own. But the skill set to be able to record that is something else. I'll tell you right now. We're, we're talking real undercover stuff. I have a headset in so I can talk to my videographer who's running across the street trying to get me going and doing the approaches and record at the right time and make sure it's not shaky. It was insane, but it was great to record it. And more importantly, it's going to help you a lot because you can emulate what I do and you can see it in action. So check that out. Link is in the show notes if you want to get that. Highly recommend that you do. Now let's go into the five flirting styles from the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior. This is back in March 2015. Two authors, Jeffrey A. Hall and Chong Zing. And like I said, I'll put the link in the show notes if you actually want to check it out, but we'll do some summarizing. Okay, so real quick, what are the five flirting styles? There's physical, there's traditional, there's sincere, there's polite, and playful. Now let me read a quick expert excerpt from this study. Okay, it says this. Each flirting style was correlated with behaviors linked to the conceptualization of that style. Colon, more conversational fluency for physical flirts, more demure, which means like kind of shy, more demure behaviors for traditional female flirts and more assertive and open behaviors by traditional male flirts, less fidgeting, teasing, and distraction and more smiling for sincere flirts, more reserved and distancing behavior by polite flirts, 
and more obviously engaging and flirtatious behaviors by playful flirts. So again, I'm going to go over this a little bit slower because this is describing all five of the different flirting styles. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up is because I think that there is something to be learned from each one of these styles that you can start to implement. All right, so let's go through those again real quick. So you got more conversational fluency for physical flirts. And then it says, this is really interesting. Sounds kind of obvious, but when you really break it down, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what's happening, right? So it says more demure, like shy, more demure behaviors for traditional female flirts and more assertive and open behaviors by traditional male flirts. So that means that you're gonna get more subtle type of flirting, not very overt from the women, which is something that I've been teaching here for a long time. You're gonna see when a female flirts with you that it's not her necessarily maybe giving you a compliment or showing that serious interest, right? It's more demure, more shy. And then the traditional male flirting, which I also talk about and teach you here on the podcast, is having a more, I mean, just like it says, a more assertive way of flirting. Then it says, for sincere flirting, less fidgeting, teasing, and distraction. So that means that that's going to be more of open flirting. You're not going to be busy twiddling your thumbs or a lot of women will, will play with their necklace. And they even kind of play with their necklace to the point where you can see like a little bit of red on their neck. So if you ever see a little bit of red on a girl's neck, it means that maybe she's a little shy, maybe that she's a little bit nervous. And then it says more reserved and distancing behavior by polite flirts. Obviously, right? A polite flirt is going to be something where you're not going to be so overt there as well. And more obviously engaging in flirtatious behaviors by playful flirts. So these are all different types. Now, I want to read something word for word that came from this study as well. Okay, so listen to this. The five flirting styles are physical, traditional, sincere, polite, and playful. The physical flirting style measures the degree to which individuals are comfortable and confident when exp expressing their romantic interest in a potential partner using their physicality. Individuals high on the physical style are able to detect the romantic interest of others and are capable of clearly conveying their own interest. So I'll stop here for, for a second. That's really interesting because... I know that when I was learning how to be more physical in my flirtation, so that means breaking the touch barrier, whether that's like a light high five or some sort of handshake or bringing her in for a hug, I was absolutely more aware of the flirting that was going on from the woman anytime she broke the touch barrier with me. So that was something I was really leaning in on in terms of the indicators of interest. Okay, let's continue. It says, those high in the traditional style believe that men should make the first move and women should not pursue men during courtship. Those low in the traditional style believe that it does not matter who initiates a relationship. They are less constrained by gender role scripts in courtship. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. So that's traditional type of flirting. I believe that generally speaking, you are more likely to be in a situation with a woman where you are gonna have that very traditional type of courtship. You do have a lot more women these days, especially modern women, who are a little bit more in touch with, I wouldn't say masculinity, but just super confident and less shy about the way that they are in their sexuality. So I have come across over the past decade, some women who will be a little bit more overt like that, who will pursue, who will make the first move, but let me tell you right now, gentlemen, it is so rare that you're ever going to have that. Remember, guys, when you're going out there, you're generally going to be having a traditional style of courtship, meaning women are going to be allowing you and wanting you to make that first move. So even though there are women out there who are doing that, don't wait for them to do that. You need to be making that first move because most of the time, nothing ever happens. So I do believe that still these days, even with everything that's happening with feminism, they are still waiting for men to make that move. Okay, so just note that. Let's continue. It says, those who are high, so now we're going to talk about sincere. Those who are high in the sincere flirting style convey romantic attraction 
through emotional connection and showing sincere interest in potential partners, which is a common and preferred tactic for initiating a romantic relationship. Okay, so what does this mean? What I would interpret from this, an emotional connection, is really when you're talking to a person, and I say this a lot also here at Trip Advice, is when you're having that emotional connection, it's gonna be a connection where you two feel like you're actually getting to know each other. I talk about this in my book, Magnetic. There's a chapter that goes into the 36 questions that make a woman fall in love with you because they did a study, this is a separate study, on people getting together and asking each other specific questions that are based in emotion rather than facts. And they've proven through that study that people actually felt closer to each other. So there is something to be said on flirting on the emotional connection, which means that you guys are not just having your generic small talk, but really getting to know each other. That's how I interpret it. Next, it says the polite style. So the polite style reflects a cautious and rule-governed approach to courtship. Proper manners, non-sexual communication, and less forward behaviors are privileged because they are felt to be more desirable and appropriate ways to communicate attraction by polite flirts. Respect for the potential partner is privileged and direct and assertive tactics are eschewed. That's one of the ones I don't teach because I don't want any women to be confused about what's happening between you and her. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean to be impolite. You don't want to be overly aggressive. Overly aggressive rarely works in itself. I would imagine that some of the polite flirting is going to be done by very subtle signs. So the most subtle sign I would imagine in polite flirting is going to be when a woman and a man are just showing attention. So they're not showing any kind of direct attraction by any means, not breaking the touch barrier, not saying compliments, not even maybe getting to know each other at a deeper level, but just showing that attention. Sometimes this gets confused for attraction as well. Some guys think, well, this girl's paying attention to me, so she must be interested. They almost don't even know it, but they're, they're taking the attention from a woman as a polite flirt. But in some cases, it's not. So just got to be really careful there. Finally, the playful flirting style is a fun, self-esteem enhancing style of flirting. Those high in the playful style flirt for instrument, instrumental motivations and use flirting as a means to attain personal, non-relational goals. Okay, after reading that a few times, I think I understand what they're talking about here. So what that means is, what I would interpret that as someone who's just always kind of being playful and flirting and just being fun. So <laughs> we come across this quite a bit. You know that one girl who's really flirty, or maybe yourself. Some guys have always been just a little bit flirtatious. They're just a flirty person. And it's not necessarily to get something done in terms of attraction, like it's almost not for attraction, it's just being playful because they're a playful person. I absolutely want you to embody the playful style of flirting. And you should be embodying that playful style of flirting for the women that you're interested in. Okay, so now that we're done reading all this study, uh, we can talk about what this all means and what they concluded, which was very interesting. What they ended up concluding was that Basically, there are a variety of ways to communicate attraction. So that means that there's not one way, but all these various ways that people are coming together to be able to flirt. Now, I know for some people that might seem kind of obvious, right? It's like, uh, yeah, we knew that there was all those ways. But one of the points that I want to try to make from this study and to you on this episode is understanding that all of these on some level should be utilized. All this should be utilized. And that's what's going to help your flirting game. We want to communicate to women as many ways as possible this idea of attraction through these ways of flirting because every single one might hit at a different level depending on the woman that you're talking to because like I said earlier, 
we want to make sure that this woman knows that you are attracted to her in that very subconscious way. And that is the whole essence of flirting that I don't think that people always understand. They think that flirting is maybe showing a lot of direct interest, but flirting, the actual definition of that means that you are doing something lightly, i.e. flirting with death. Like you're almost there, but you're not there all the way. And this is what makes it powerful. When you come on too strong, which I would not say flirting is, so coming on way too strong, being too aggressive, maybe touching her too much, giving her too many compliments, showing too much interest, asking her too many questions, all of that is so aggressive and too assertive that it actually turns the woman off. The only exception to that is maybe if she's already super physically attracted to you, you have some sort of status, but even then I would argue that that would come off unattractive. So meaning, let's take an example of someone who has a really high status, really attractive, you know, like a Leonardo DiCaprio, Harry Styles, whoever you want. Those guys will attract most women because of their status, because of their looks, because of their talent. But even if that guy comes off too aggressive, I guarantee you, it will still turn a woman off to some degree. Maybe not enough for her to be like, all right, I'm not interested anymore because of how high status that person is. But the more aggressive you are, the worse it's going to be for you. That's why it has to be really light, which is what flirting is in essence. And using all these different styles are going to be to your advantage. Again, let's go through them again one by one so you can learn how you will be able to actually implement them to be flirting with the women that you're talking to. So you have physical touch. Now, this is one that I don't think is absolutely necessary. And I say that because I also think that it can go wrong a lot easier uh, depending on how much practice you have. But physical flirting can be very simple. One of my favorite moves to do physical flirting, which is not something you're normally going to do with the friend, and that's why it comes off more powerful than it sounds like it is, is just a super light touch on her arm, her elbow, forearm, bicep, just any of that area when you're exclaiming some sort of point or reacting to what she says and doing it either with the back of your hand or just a light grasp on the shoulder, something like that communicates to her, okay, this conversation now is more than just talking. We're breaking that touch barrier and she might see that through the actual touch, right? So physical flirting is big. If you want to go more advanced with it, and I only say advanced, not because it's difficult, but it just takes a level of awareness to know when you're going to be able to do this one is a mid-conversation hug. And what I'm talking about here, by the way, with all of this flirting, all this flirting is happening usually on some sort of initial approach or potentially on a first date where you guys are just getting to know each other. But a lot of this still mainly with that first approach, if you're talking to a woman at a party, at a bar, or something like that. But yes, still a lot of these can be used on a date, of course. I just say that the difference between those two is a date, there's already some level of attraction there. So while you do want to flirt, and it is important, it's going to be extremely important on the very initial approach like the time when there's not even a date set when it's just two strangers talking that's when it's going to be so crucial which is why i talk more about flirting in the sense of meeting someone in person because it's like well yeah that's fine it's good to do on the first date and you want to but you need to be focusing on that one part because if you don't focus more of the flirting on that initial approach and interaction then you might get in the friend zone. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to avoid friend zone, but also we want to escalate to the point where she knows that you're flirting with her. So then when you ask her out, she knows what's going on and this all builds attraction. Okay, next is traditional flirting, which just means that you're going to be the pursuer. Simple enough. You're going to be the one who's not going to wait for her to flirt. You are going to be the one to be doing the actions that are discussed here, right? Traditional means the male is usually doing it versus the female who's doing it, which, which of course we already went over. And then there's more sincere flirting, which just means you're not showing signs of shyness or, you know, being all cute and kind of being reserved. It's going to be more direct. When I say more direct, I even mean more intentional. 
This will probably come with some sort of form of a compliment. This is the one that I don't usually love. I don't want guys to be using, using too many compliments because I just think that women are getting compliments way too much and they don't have the same effect. So when you're complimenting and showing that very overt interest where it's like there's no something more overt than a compliment, right? Like that is the number one. Maybe past that might be saying to a girl that you like her, but that's not flirting because that's so overt. So the compliments, doing something like that, it's gonna have less impact than doing some of these more subtle flirts. Then there's polite flirting. We're not gonna use any of this. This is not for you. Polite flirting is just not enough. It's like the bare minimum, just showing attention. So while you know you're already doing that, you don't need to focus on that one. Then you have playful. Playful hands down is the one that I teach the most because it's the most important. Because that one is showing that you can be fun. You're teasing her a little bit. You're kind of poking at her a little bit. You're making the conversation more interesting. This one is for guys who are super charismatic. And that's why I push this one the most because you can really only be charismatic to be more playful. People who are generally not charismatic are not as playful. So combining all this together, you become super attractive to the woman, not only because you're being charismatic, but also because you are flirting inside of all of that. So, all right, we just dissected a bunch of these different flirting styles. Like I said, if you want to go into the show notes, you can check out the link and you can read it for yourself if you want to dissect each one of those. Or even more importantly, you can start implementing some of these flirting styles, right? I don't want you to almost uh, over-research it because then you might get in your head too much and we don't want that. So my advice to you is take one of these styles, the ones that I've talked about that really work, and see what you can do with it the next time you're talking with a woman. So some of those can be just a playful touch on the arm, could be a little bit of a tease, showing interest by just talking to her and building that emotional connection by asking deeper questions and getting to know her and what she likes and how she feels about things, talking about things on the emotional level versus the factual level. For example, instead of being like, oh, so where'd you go to school? She goes, oh, I went to you know Arizona State. And you say, cool, what do you do for work now? It's like, eh, we're bored, right? Oh, you went to Arizona State. How'd you like that? Was it cool? Was it fun? I heard that's a party school. You must have been wasted like every day, right? Again, that's a combination of being playful, a little teasing, but also building a little bit more of an emotional connection versus just getting the facts. So we use some of those, help to build attraction with the women that we're talking to.